greater song. I want to sit at your feet. Amen. Listen, I, I think over the last 10 years, 11 years of my life, the greatest feeling I ever feel is when I'm sitting at the feet of Jesus. Sitting in His presence and asking Him to move in my life. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Ephesians 4. <clears throat> Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. We got a lot of scripture today. And um, so if you it's on the back of your bulletin. If you didn't get a bulletin, we have some more. Please get one on your way out. Um, we're going to start off in Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 16. And as Brother Jackie said, and I'm going to happy birthday, Restoration Chapel. Amen. 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 Listen, I, I don't know, I'm excited about it. Yeah, I, I tell you, it's, a, it's amazing how we can look at our past and see where we came from and see what God is doing in our lives. And through the ups and downs, we learn from it and we keep moving and keep striving and keep growing. And I thank God for that. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16, it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God and to a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the side of man and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by the every which by every by it which every joint supplied, according to the effectual work it in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. If you look at the NIV version, I want to read it to you real quick. It says, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers to equip his body for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and becoming mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their disciple scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. For when the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows, everybody say grow, grows. and builds, everybody say builds, builds, itself up in love as each part does it work. I would like to welcome you again to Restoration Chapel. And over the last couple of months, I, I've been praying and God has slightly changed our vision, our, our mission, and our core values for our church for the next 10 years. Our vision statement now reads that we are a Jesus-centered, spirit-led, community-minded church that will serve, everybody say serve, serve, our community to help restore the knowledge and works of God. But the only way we can do that is by growing. The only way we can do that is by growing. I look at the past and I, I see how uh, uh, Brother Culberson, if I'm not mistaken, came in and, 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 and he started this church in, the, in, in 1970. And Brother James came in and we had Brother Lang and Brother Pitts and Brother Merck. And, and, and then we went to Brother Cobb. And, and I heard this great story about 1982, or as I like to call it, BB, before Bobby, two years. <laughs> Before Bobby in 1982, uh, uh, Brother Cobb got up here, and it was his first service here in August 1st, 1982. And he stood up, and he asked the church a question. He said, are you ready for your church to grow? The very next Sunday, 103 showed up. By the end of the month, August 29th, 232 people showed up. In nearly 10 months that Brother Cobb was here as the pastor, the church attendance record was broken, as Brother Jackie said, at 255. As a matter of fact, I wanted you to see this. Now, some of you don't even know what this is, okay? This is called a record. Amen. <laughs> amen. You can't put this in your iPod. Amen. You can't put this in your CD player. 
This is what used to play music. I did have one when I was real, real little, but this is what we used to. And, and, and there's a story here that when that record was broke, Brother Jackie took one of these, and Brother Cobb was standing up here, and he took it. Now, not this one, amen, because this one. And he took it, and he hit it on Brother Cobb's head so the record would break. I told Brother Jack, we're going to just dis disturb, uh, we're going to let him show us as an example. So, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but he took it, he broke it over his head and broke the record. And as I began to think about it, you know, that record was broke that day. But listen, church, there's plenty of records that need to be broke. Not just the attendance number, but you know what? Some of us has got to break out and get come closer to God. Some of us has got to break out and we got to stop being an infant, being tossed from here and there. Listen, church, it's great that you've been saved, but we're church of God of prophecy. We're Pentecostal, amen. We believe in sanctification. We believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We believe in divine healing. We believe in a God that can do the impossible. There have been times that this church has been filled with the Spirit so much that a haze would come over this church and people outside the door would say, what's going on there? I've heard stories of people who get so in tune with the Holy Ghost that they would run out the back door and they would run all over this meal hill praising God. Amen. Some of you younger people look at me like I'm crazy. But God is the same God. God is the same God. Some of us look at records and we say they don't need to be broken, but I say God's got greater and bigger things for each and every one of us. He said we must grow and we must be and we must come, the body of Christ. We must come apart of what God has called us to be. You see, we are the body. God and Jesus is the head. And when we line up with him, he'll do great things in our lives. So the question today I want to ask you is the same in 1982. Are you ready for your church to grow? You see, not all churches are prepared to grow in number and in spirit. We read in Revelations 3, 15 through 19 about a church that was not ready to grow. It says in chapter 3, verse 15 and 19, it says, I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would not that were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I'm rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I cancel thee to buy of me a gold tide of fire. That thou mayest be, re be rich and, and white raiment. That thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eye slave, that thou must see as many as I love I rebuke and chastise be zealous therefore and repent church we got to get back to God hey, you know what it means to be zealous amen are you excited about what God's doing hey, and don't just shake your head yes you better get excited about what God's doing amen. we was eating soup last night people were getting excited about that soup amen some of us ate too some of some of some people ate too much soup amen they, they were telling me last night I don't know if I'm gonna make it in the morning because my belly it, it just feels so good right now amen I don't know if I'm gonna be able to sleep tonight you know we get excited about so much stuff well why are we not excited about what God is doing in our lives you know what I see God doing amen I see a group of young men sitting on the second pew when you see churches that are no, there's no young men to be found at. Amen. I see people like Sister Jean, who they said wasn't even going to make it out of the hospital. She's coming to church and praising God because God healed her. I see some of you that have been praying for family members for years and years and they come here to the house of God. And, and yeah, they might not be fully saved, but praise be to God, they're hearing the gospel. They're hearing the word and God will do mighty and great things. Some of you are going through financial issues, but somehow you had gas to get to church this morning. Somehow you had bread on your table. You had water to drink. You had clothes to put on. Church, why can't we get excited? 
God is doing amazing and great things. And I tell you what, it's starting. It might, I don't know if it's happening to other churches because I, I, I just love Restoration Chapel. Amen. I've been told you. You might try to kick me out of here, but I love rest, I love Restoration Chapel. I'm going to be here because this is my church. Amen. Not because I'm the preacher, but because God has called me here not to be your preacher, but to be a part of a congregation that is ready to grow, that is ready to reach the lost, that's ready to go out and restore the knowledge and works of God. And church, when we allow that to happen in our lives, we will be excited about Him. That's right. Are you ready to grow? Yeah. Brother Jackie told me a story that Brother Cobb stood on the front porch and he said, man, all these people are going to start coming. And Brother Jackie said, where are we going to put them? And you know what? The Spirit hit Brother Cobb and he began to shout and knock down the front porch because he was so excited about what God was about to do. Church, when do you get excited? Go ahead and praise Him for the promise. Go ahead and praise Him for the future because God has something to ready to grow, church? Are you ready to grow? This church was missing something. Something they had forgot. And I want to be, I want to be really real with you this morning. If you want to have real enduring growth, we must get ready to grow by preparing ourselves individually to grow. You see, growth begins with what we're willing to do individually. For a con great congregation is no stronger or ready to grow than the members are willing to be. Amen. Amen. I was looking at my bank account the other day. Amen. And I was actually telling, I, I wanted to call the bank and say, I got too much money in there. <laughs> It wasn't a lot, amen. But you know what? I wanted my dollar bill to have a relationship with the other dollar bill. And I wanted my quarter to have a relationship with the penny. And I thought if it got too big, amen, they wouldn't be able to have a relationship with one another. And because of that, I told them to stop putting money in my bank account. Just go ahead and put it in somebody else's, amen. Says nobody, amen. Listen, church, I... We talk to people and we love the family like atmosphere. We love the love. But you know what? That can happen when the church grows. Amen. Don't be scared of growth because when you stop growing, you die. Amen. When trees stop growing, it dies. Amen. It, it begins to wilt. It begins to fall over. And then after a while, you got a dead tree. Church, we've got to get to the point that we're not scared of growing. we got to get to the point that we're preparing ourselves to grow. And I'm not just talking about Restoration Chapel. I'm talking about the body of Christ. I wish every church in Williamson, from what I, what I was told, there's 30 churches in the town limits of Williamson alone. There's only 3,000 people in the town limits of, 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 of Williamson alone. And you know what, church? I wish every one of them was slack full of people. <laughs> Because I'm ready to see the body of Christ stand up for what the body of Christ believes in. I'm ready for people to stop getting divorced. I'm ready for people to stop lusting. I'm ready for people to stop backsliding. I want to see a revival, a movement of God, a God that But we've got to be prepared. We've got to be ready. So as I begin praying, as I begin studying, there's three things that I believe we must strengthen or we must get ready if we're ever going to see growth. The third, first thing we must do before we grow is strengthen our relationship with God. Everybody say our. Our. Amen. Not our. <laughs> I, you know, in September, it's taught like a pirate day, and I get excited about that day. Amen. Me and my son like playing pirates. Arr, you know. But I'm talking about R. Amen. Everybody say mine. Mine. Oh, there you go. Everybody say me. Amen. Me. You know, we like talking a lot about me until we start bringing the bad points out. You see, church, if we're ever going to grow spiritually, then we better look in the mirror and find out what's going on in our lives. We're not perfect. Amen. We got a lot to work on. We got a lot that we need to get fixed. We got a lot that we need to change. And you know what, church, it starts with us. Uh, a great philosopher, amen. I don't know if he's a philosopher, but Michael Jackson once said, amen. He said, I'm starting with a man in the mirror. If I'm going to make a change, it's going to have to be the person I'm looking at first. 
Church, if we're ever going to grow, you've got to look at yourself first. And church, I, when I look at this, I see that we cannot share what we have if we never walk around in the blessings of God. Most of us go around talking about the Lord, but do people see a change in our life?
couple months, we're going to start changing some things. We're going to start having some mentor classes. We're going to start having some people team up with people. When people get saved, instead of throwing them out in the fire, we're going to go in the fire with them. We're going to grab a hole with them and walk. And you know what? That might be some extra work for some of us, but praise be to God, I'd rather see somebody saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost than see somebody saved and walk outside this building and fall flat on their face. <laughs> We're going to start some discipleship class. Because church growth starts inside of us. Which leads us to the second point. How we can grow. The second thing we must do before we, before we can grow is strengthen our relationship with one another. One of our core values is that we will unite together in the midst of diversity. You see, church, our love and unity is one of the most powerful witnesses for Jesus. John 13, 34 and 35 says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. John 17, 20 through 21 says, Neither pray I for these alone, for them also which thou shalt believe on me through their words, that they all may be one, as thou Father art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Church, I love it that we're different. Amen. Amen. We've got Guatemala. <coughs> We've got Puerto Rican. We've got all the Peruvian. We've got all, we've got young. We've got South Carolinian. <laughs> Honduras. Amen. We have people from the north. We have people from the south. We have people from the east. We have people from the west. We have poor people. We have rich people. We have skinny people. We have big people. Amen. We have tall people. We have short people. We have young. We have all. And praise be to God, I'm glad that we're different. But you know what? Even though we're different, we can unite together to do the one call. That's right. Because our vision, our vision is clear. And that is to restore this community to the knowledge and works of God. And the Bible calls us, in Matthew, if I'm not mistaken, the 28th chapter, it says, Jesus says, I give you power to go out and make disciples of all nations. To go out and preach the gospel. To teach to train, to lift up, to develop. And church, if we unite together, we can do that better than just doing it on our own. <coughs> Have you ever been somewhere where somebody's fussing all the time? And it's hard, right? There used to be a restaurant I went to, and every time you walked into the door, they were yelling in the back. I didn't call for a burger. I called for chicken fingers. <laughs> you cooked that wrong. Amen. You know what? Every time I walked in there, I wanted to leave. Nobody wants to be in a place where everybody's arguing. But if we can unite together, amen. No matter how young we are, no matter how old we are, we might not like everything, but we understand it's for, the, it's for God. We might, the music might vary. And we might like, I fly away and they might sing, the more I seek you. We might like uh, when the roll is called up yonder and they might sing, our God is greater. But you know what? If we will combine together and unite together and throw a little I fly away with my God is greater and God move in a mighty way and we just worship and unite together, God will do great things in our church. I'm tired of church this I wish, amen, if I could, I'd pull all the pews. Y'all all be sitting together. Amen. We just put a long row all the way through. Because you know what, church? It's time that we unite. It's, it's time that we come together. When they go to that church, I want them to say, listen, I really wait. I can't wait for this day. When they walk into church and say, man, there's some crazy people. They're all different. They don't look alike. There's black. There's white. There's Hispanic. There's Asian. There's people that like to shout. There's people that like to cry. But praise be to God, they are still trying to find Jesus Christ. We've got to be united. The third way we can grow, after we look at ourselves, after we unite together, is 
we must develop a relationship with the lost. We must develop a relationship with the lost. Amen. Now listen. This is hard for us to do. But church, I thank God we got people here that don't want to stand inside these four walls. That they want to reach out and grab those that don't know who God is. I told you a story. Man, if you're cutting grass one day and everything's going great and the ambulance just stops and they throw you off the lawnmower and they begin to do CPR on you, what are you going to do? You're going to be like, what's going on? You see, you know, that's what we try to do. We try to preach to the saints instead of reaching out to those that are falling down. Church, it's time that we start reaching out to this community. It's time, listen, I... We're not financially able to give everybody a million dollars, but we are able to say, listen, I'm here for you, my friend. I'm here for you, my brother. I'm here for you, my sister. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It don't matter how bad it is or how, how, how people look at you. You can be a prostitute. You can be a drug dealer. You can be laying on the street, but we're going to love you. We don't condone what you do, but we're going to guide you to the Savior, to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords. We're going to let you develop into a relationship with God. Back to our history. I love it because Brother James, his first Sunday here, on um, his second term here, his first Sunday here, he stood behind the pulpit and he said, if you're not willing to love anybody that walks through that back door, I will not be your pastor. I thank God for people that say, listen, no matter who you are, we're going to love you. You can be the biggest pain in neck in this whole town. We still going to love you. Amen. Because I know some people think I'm a pain in the neck. I know some people think I'm all down and all out. I thank God for people like brother and sister subs that prayed for me even though I was lost, even though I was undone, even though I was cocky, even though I thought I was all that. There was a group, as I told you many, many times, of six teenagers are sitting here, or four teenagers sitting here on this front pew. And God, because people love them, God made a mighty move in their life. And every single one of them are leadership in our church right now. People like Sister Trudy that would pray and sing. Even if that means she had to stand and sing for three hours, my God is real. She was going to do it no matter what. For people like Sister Myrtle that would just put her hand on her back and just pray and, and let the Spirit just flow through her. No matter who was around, she just said, God, just consume me so God can consume them. For people like Sister Marilyn, and I can go on down the list, that kept picking us up every time that we fail. They said, no matter how bad it is, no matter how much they get on our nerves, we are still going to love them because God has called us to love them. Church, we've got to reach outside the doors. We've got to reach outside and let God move in a mighty way. Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Church is Restoration Chapel, a church that is hiding the light from of God. Or are we a church that is taking that light and going into the neighborhood and saying no matter who you are, come to Jesus Christ. There are many people that are here that are in our community, that are in need. There are many people that are here, are in our community that are sick. But church, we need to let them know who Jesus Christ is. Who Jesus Christ is. That means we've got to step out of our comfort zone. We've got to be around people that are not like us. That means sometimes we have to reach out to people that have some issues. <coughs> but I've told you this many, many times, and I don't mind telling you again. This place better not become a museum of saints. This place better become a sick hospital where people come in and get fixed. That people see Jesus Christ and say, no matter what, I'm going. I'm going. 
Listen, I'll never forget when I was down in my darkest days. I told you about my depression problem. I could always look to my church family. My church family was always there for me. Some of you have lost loved ones. And you know who was there for you? Your church family. Your church family. Some of you have gone through sickness. Some of you have gone through issues. Some of you have gone through things. And maybe they didn't get you out of it, but they were right there by your side, calling you, just asking you how you were doing. Just loving on you a little bit. Church, that's what church is all about. It's not about big buildings. It's about taking the light outside of these walls and reaching people. Restoring a community to the knowledge and works of God. Restoring a community to the knowledge and works of God. No matter what you're going through, God says, I am the light. I am the one, I'm the healer. We sung the song, it says our God is awesome, our God is awesome. He's my provider, he's my healer, he's my deliverer, he's my king, he's my all. We sing a song that says he's my healer, nothing is impossible with him. Church, I want us to really grasp on, to be the light in this community. Church, we need to become the church. Acts chapter 2, I'm not mistaken, about the 40 and something verse, 38, the 40 something verse, you know what happens in that? They became the church. You know what happens when they became the church? They went out into the communities and they began fellowshipping with one another. Listen, they didn't wait for church on Sunday. And you know what? They started having church in their own house. Hey, amen. They started going out and breaking bread with others. You know what Jesus did? Most of the time, Jesus, when he did his miracles, it wasn't inside the temple. It was outside with the lost and the ones that were sick. Sometimes we're too scared to even lift our hands and praise God for our food. Because we're worried about what people say. We're too scared to say, hey, why don't you come to church with me? Because we're worried about being thrown down. We're too scared to invite our family because we think our family will never come back and see us anymore. We're too scared to be Jesus freaks because we're scared that people will run from us. We're too scared to be the light of the world. So we hide under a bushel and we're reaching no one. Church, we need growth. As the praise team comes, amen. We did it last week, I'm going to do it again. If the whole praise team will come on up, amen. As I look back over our history, there's been many ups and downs. But you know what? There's always greater things in store. Restoration Chapel is here in Williamston for a reason. Restoration Chapel is here in this Mill Hill for a reason. The meal might be shut down, but praise be to God, we're still here for a reason. We're still here. God has put us here. And church, God still has something in store for us. Well, we've got to start with us. Then we've got to unite together. And then we've got to reach the lost. Are you ready for your church to grow?
go out and reach the lost. We're never going to build if we don't unite together, pray together, lift each other up together, and do the work of God together. I told you from day one, this church might call me pastor, but I'm just like you. We're out here doing the work of God. I'm no greater. You're no greater. We, we connect together and we go through the work of God together. And then we got to reach out. Are you ready for your church to grow? I ask you to stand. Amen. Amen. This morning I'm going to do something just a little bit different. Last week we praised on the way out. Amen. We praised on the way. We just, some people looked at me like I was crazy last week. Man. People going outside. Hey, man. I seen one person even banging their fake um, um, bongo drum. Because we banged one up here. They were just banging. They didn't even have a bongo drum. They were just going like this. Amen. Well, then you know what we're going to do then? Are you ready to grow? Are you ready to unite? And are you ready to you are you ready to reach? If you're ready to do one of those three things, I'm gonna ask you here in just a second if you'll come on up. Look, don't look around and say, oh well, so-and-so will look at me. You know what? Pray, I'm already up here. Amen. I, I've got sins, I've got problems, I've got issues. I have to come to God daily. Amen. To come to God and say, God, I'm sorry for what I've done. You can do the same. If you want to unite together, then you come up here and unite together. You grab a hold of somebody's hand, you come up here and you unite. If you want to grow, you come up here and just pray for growth. The song says, The more I seek you, the more I find you. In church, if you're not seeking, you're not going to find anything. Hide and seek's fun until there's nobody hiding. Amen. <laughs> Or until you just forget about seeking everybody and you just sit on the couch. Amen. There's nobody there. We've got to seek God. As they begin to sing, I'm going to ask you this morning. As Brother Cobb asked the church in 1982, August 1st, 1982. As I know Brother James thought and Brother Suggs, uh, Sister Cobb, Brother Cobb, Brother Pitts, Brother Merck, uh, Brother Culberson, Brother Lane. As they all look, are you ready to grow? Are you ready to grow? With every head bow, with every eye closed, if you're ready to go, I'm going to ask you to come up. Come up and seek God. Thank you, Lord.